This sample problem is going to be looking at roof framing and materials. So for, first we will focus on the roof framing portion. So we will look at calculating our truss top cord or our rafter length, depending on how it is framed. And with that information, we can calculate various information such as the square footage of the roof, the perimeter of the roof, the overhang framing, and all of the above information. Then we will look at the frame and materials uh, and we will calculate the underlayment, the drip edge, as well as the shingles required for our roof. So starting off, we're going to look at our plan 100, looking at common trusses versus gable end trusses. We'll look at the top cord, the length of the roof system, so the entire perimeter of our system, and then our board foot of subfascia and the gable over him framing before we focus on sheathing. Before we start our calculations, we want to look at a couple of drawings as to why we keep things separate. So if we are dealing with a truss system, so we have prefabricated trusses that come out on site Typically, our common trusses, so the trusses that will repeat throughout our structural, will have some type of web configuration that is predetermined by the engineer. There are various types. Very common one is our W shape, and this is what we will use throughout our structure. However, on our ends of our gables, traditionally, we will have a slightly different configuration that will look more like this for our gable end. The main difference is, has to do with our exterior materials. Just like with our studs, when we want to try and create a easy nailing pattern for our exterior sheathing and our drywall, we want to do the same thing with our gable ends. So that is why we have our vertical components on our gable ends. It's mainly for the exterior sheathing purposes. But throughout the structure, we will have a different type of web within our common truss. And so because they are configured differently, we need to make sure that we count them differently when we're doing our calculations. So just like as in floor framing, where our ends are different because we have a band board instead of a common joist, we'll have gable end trusses instead of common trusses on our ends. So that will make a difference in our configuration. So starting off, we will calculate first the clear span. This is important when we are configuring what our trusses are for our structure. So if we have our frame that we're working with for our trusses, that sits on top of our wall system. We will notice that even though we have a span of 26 feet per our width of our structure, our truss doesn't actually have to span that far because it rests on top of the wall on both sides. Our clear span is the portion that is not going to be supported by any wall structure. So we have to subtract out our wall width to understand what that clear span will be, and that is how we determine the size and configuration of our common trusses for the structural of our roof. So determining this calculation is simply taking the overall width that is provided in the plans. And since we have two by four walls, an actual two by four is three and a half. We have that on both sides. So we subtract three and a half from each side and we get 25 feet, five inches. This is the type of information that an engineer would know or a trust manufacturer would need to know to be able to calculate and size our trusses for our structure. What we're going to do though is calculate the amount of the both the gable and the common trusses since we will not be 
engineering the trusses ourselves. We're simply going to be placing them. To do that, we simply calculate our repetitive member items. So recall this is our length divided by our spacing. So we have a 36 foot length. Remember, it's very important to remember how our trusses, our floor systems, everything is configured. The length in this situation deals with the part that is perpendicular to the span of our trusses. So the width is the span. Our trusses are spanning the 26 feet, but they run along the 36 foot length. So it's our 36 foot length divided by the 24 inch spacing that is provided in the plans and specs. We get 18. Because it is a whole number, we don't have to round up. If it was anything in decimal form, we would have to round up, but we, here it's a whole number, so we have 18 spaces. In, in this situation, in this situation, we're going to subtract one and end up with 17 common trusses. And the reason why we are subtracting one is similar to our floor system. We have different gable end trusses. And since our ends are different, we need to make sure not to include them. So that is why we're going to subtract one. So our final answer, we have 17 for our common trusses. Number three is looking at our gable end. It says calculate the gable end trusses. I just showed you and have been saying that we have one each end. So we don't really need to calculate anything. We just need to count. We have two ends, so therefore we have two gable end trusses. We're now gonna get into a little bit more in depth with our top cord calculation. This picture is posted on Blackboard Learn. It gives you a little more information on how the, either the rafter or the top cord is calculated. The reason why we have two different terms is whether we have a stick frame roof or if we're using trusses. The terminology, if we're using trusses, is top cord. If we're using stick frame, we typically say rafter. A lot of times you will hear those interchanged. So here is the member that we are looking at calculating. It's on a diagonal. So we can use our good old Pythagorean theorem if we know the height as well as the length to figure out what that diagonal is. We'll need a couple of pieces of information. We'll need to know what our span is to be able to divide it in half. We'll need to know what our main overhang is. When we're talking about our main overhang, we're talking about the overhang at our eaves. So this is the horizontal overhang at the bottom of our roof. If we're talking about the part in which our gable sticks out, either in this case away from the page or in the opposite direction, that is going to be our gable overhang. So there is a difference between the gable overhang and the main overhang. The other important piece of information we would need to know is our roof slope or our pitch. We have 4 over 12 or 412 is typically how it is listed. So again, please reference this for future calculations, but we are going to be working out the problem as well. So for our top cord, we need to start off with our span, not our clear span. As you can see, the main overhang goes from the outside wall 
to the edge of the top cord. It does not go from the inside of the wall. Therefore, this is why we have to use our span and not our clear span. So our span is 26 feet. So we divide that by two and that is 13 feet for half of our span. We then have to add our main overhang to get our full horizontal dimension when we are calculating with our Pythagorean theorem. It is important to note that this two feet is a horizontal dimension. You don't calculate the top core diagonal and then add it on. That would be incorrect. You don't add it to the span and then di divide by two because we have two feet on both sides. You would have to add it twice before you divide it by two if you wanted to do it that way. But first you divide your span by two, add the main overhang to get our full width of our triangle. So our 15 is our width. If we know what our slope of our roof is, in this case it is a 412, we would always put that number over 12. So if it's 512, 812, depending on what that is, it is always based off of the 12 number, so essentially based off of a foot. We can use similar triangles to help us calculate what our height is, our unknown. So if we have a height of four, or a rise of four to a run of 12, that would be similar to the height over 15 feet. We can cross multiply and realize that 12 times our height is equal to four times our 15 feet, and our height is going to be five feet. The length of our top cord then is simply the square root of our 5 squared plus 15 squared, 15.8114, and I have rounded it to 15.8 feet as our final answer for our top cord. However, when I use this number in future calculations, I'm always going to use our unrounded number when I am figuring out future numbers. This is a very important number to get correct. We're going to be using this length for multiple calculations, so we want to make sure that we are getting an accurate number. Number five, we're looking at our roof length. This is another drawing I will be referencing uh, multiple times. So if we have our roof, we've learned how to calculate our rafter or top cord. We have our standard length of our building, but the additional overhang for the gables needs to be added in to make sure that we have the correct roof length. So if we're looking at our structure in terms of our three-dimensional view, this portion sticks out past, so the actual house sits back a little farther. So this here is our gable, and in our situation it is a one-foot overhang. Our main overhang is a two-foot overhang. So we have two different overhangs. We have, again, the eave or the main overhang, that's two feet, and the gable overhang, that is one foot. So our roof length is simply the 36 foot length of our structure, or our house in this case, plus one foot gable overhangs on both sides for a total of 38 feet. So the roof length is 38 feet. It's our house length plus one foot gable overhang on each end of our structure.
Now that we have calculated our roof length and our top cord length, we can calculate the roof perimeter. And that is what we are looking at in number six. So when we're talking about the perimeter of the roof, we're talking about the rafter length or the top cord length, the length of the roof, back up the rafter length, down the other side, along the roof length on the other side, and we have back up, back down. It is easier to think about it is if we had our pitched roof at an angle and we're flattening it out. So it is still a square or rectangle that we can calculate, but we're just calculating it on a pitch so that we can get, still get a perimeter that is flat. To do that, we take two times the 38 foot roof length. But instead of taking two times our width or our top cord, we have to take four times our top cord. Again, the 15.8114, our unrounded number. And the reason why we do this is because we have two top cords for each end of our structure. 139.24 five six and I've rounded it to 139.25 feet you could say 139 feet three inches you could say 134 feet or sorry 140 feet uh, any is acceptable I've just simply rounded it to this dimension in this structure we will get into the discussion of exterior materials later uh, we are using a vinyl soffit and fascia, which requires a subfascia. You can find this on the wall section, and it says that the subfascia is a 1 by 6. So look at the wall section for plan 100, and you will see where it is noted on the detail that we have a 1 by 6 subfascia. So this runs the perimeter of the roof. And we just calculated that perimeter. We have 139.25 feet. What number seven is asking for though is board feet of subfascia. So we can take our length, we can multiply it by one by six over 12 which is also 0.5 board foot per lineal foot. And we can get 69.6228, it's board feet. We need to round up to the nearest whole board foot. So that is 70 board feet of subfascia required around our perimeter of our roof. Next up, we are looking at our framing for our gable ends. So this is the gable end overhang framing. So we'll reference our drawing again. In order to create this overhang, we will essentially construct ladders that will go on each end on both sides of each end. We have visuals in our lecture that show this in more detail. But in terms of calculations, we can look at our gable overhang framing down here and in the question, it says to make sure to include lo lookouts. The lookouts essentially are the rungs of our ladder. Here, we say that they're spaced 24 inches on center. This is the same spacing as our trusses. It does not have to be the same. So whatever is in our specifications for our lookouts, that is what we need to use in our calculation. We already know that our gable overhang is one foot per our specifications. And we've calculated that our top cord or our rafter length is this 15.8 feet. 
So we can do our standard repetitive number to figure out what our framing is going to be. So first off, we want to calculate the quantity of lookouts. So again, this are like the rungs of the ladder. So I'm just going to put rungs in parentheses. We need to figure out how many of those we have. These are repetitive items. So we can take our length, our unrounded number, divided by our spacing, 24 inches on center or two feet on center, and we get 7.9057. We need to round up at this point to get our number of spaces. We have eight total spaces. And in this situation, we are going to add one, so we have nine each, or nine lookouts. Again, I want to reiterate that this 24 inches is the lookout spacing. It is not the truss spacing. They may or may not be the same thing, so make sure you check your specification. The length of each of these lookouts needs to be calculated as well. Per our drawing, we see that we have a one foot overhang, but we have two by fours that frame the sides of our ladder, so the lookouts themselves are not going to be the full one foot. We have to subtract out the sides of the ladder, and if we're using a standard two by material, we know that is actually inch and a half, in thickness, and we have that on each side, so we have to take two times an inch and a half off of our overhang. So if we have one foot or 12 inch in our overhang, we subtract out two times the two thicknesses of a two by, we get nine inches is the length of each lookout. So if we're calculating one ladder, so one of our overhang framings, we need the sides of our ladder, which are the 15.8114 feet. So each side, and then we have nine lookouts that are all nine inches in length do that, we get 38.3728 feet, and we have four ladders in our roof system, two each end and two ends. So our total length is 153.4912, and I have rounded that to 153.5 feet of overhang lookout framing. So if you have questions on how the overhang framing is calculated, again, refer back to the drawing that's posted on Blackboard. We go through the same steps. We figure out the length of each lookout, the quantity, and for the ladders, how we can figure that two sides of the ladders that are the full 15.8, that is the rafter or top cord length, and then we have one, two, three, four ladders to make our overhang framing. So that is where we get our total quantity from. Next up in our framing, we are going to look at the roof square footage. So again, we're looking at our roof. We've already calculated that we have 15.8 roughly for our top cord length, and we have 38 feet for our roof length. Square footage, we can simply take 15.8, again, our unrounded number by 38 feet, and get us a square footage but that's not going to be enough to get the full roof. If we did that, it only gets us 
one side. In order to get the back side, or the other side, we need to multiply this by two. We need to get both sides of our roof. So when we do that, we get 1201.664, which I have rounded up then to 1202 square feet. However, we don't have to round up in this situation. I have simply done so. If you left it at 1201.6 or 0.7, that would be an acceptable number or any decimal. So I've only rounded up to the nearest whole number for my benefit. With the square footage of our roof, we can calculate our sheathing. We have a standard four foot by eight foot sheathing we have been working with with multiple items, whether it is our wall sheathing, our floor sheathing, the drywall itself is usually a four by eight sheet. It does come in different options as well. But four by eight is our standard. And we usually try and think of ways that can help us calculate numbers a little bit easier or a little bit faster because we don't always have our calculators in the field. And even though we have cell phones that have calculators on everything, we don't want to be fumbling around with a bunch of difficult numbers while we're trying to give an owner or another individual, a subcontractor, the numbers that are needed for a quick estimate. One way, way we can do this is by using the two foot, four foot rule. What this means is we can take our top cord length and round it to the nearest two foot increment. And we can also take our roof length and round that to the nearest four foot increment. So if we have 15.8114 feet for our top cord, the nearest two foot increment is simply 16 feet. With a roof length of 38 feet, the nearest four foot increment is simply 40 feet. If anyone tried to calculate 15.8114 by 38 in their head, it would be very difficult to do so but somebody can easily calculate 16 feet by 14 feet in their head or on scratch paper if they need it to come up with 640 square feet. Again, this is only one side, so we need to make sure we multiply it by two, but again, multiplying by two is an easy number to quickly do in our heads, 640 times two, 1280 square feet. So you'll notice it is very similar to our square footage. It is slightly high, and that's usually good so that we don't come short on material. But we can then quickly take our 1280 and divide it by the 32 square feet that is a standard four by eight sheet of plywood and come up with a good rounded number of 40 each and for our numbers of sheets of sheathing for our roof. So we could have calculated the number of sheathing by simply taking our 1202 divided by our 32 square feet, that is one sheet, and got our name, number that way. But again, if we're trying to learn tricks of the trade to do some calculations quickly, we can use a two foot, four foot rule to come up with a number that is very close just a little high to make sure we have extra and that will allow us a good calculation and a good number that we can come up with quickly and possibly not need to have potential errors calculating it in our calculators. So this concludes our roof framing. At this point we will switch over to calculating our roofing materials.